morning learners, are you excited for today's lesson? Come and join me in an awesome adventure in music, arts, PE, and health. Dahil sa Mapi 8, DC 566, katawan ay liliglig, kaya halina at patutaw with Mapi 8. Health 8, Quarter 3, Lesson 6, Our Topic, Chain of Infection. And this is your teacher, Mrs. Rachel A. Atanasio. Our lesson objectives are define and understand the different chain of infection. Show awareness on the importance of one's role in breaking the chain of infection. Recall healthy lifestyle in the prevention and control of disease. Can you still remember our lesson about the stages of infection? Let us recall. Direction. Arrange the numbers according to the sequence of the different stages of infection. If you answer 3, 1, 2, 4, then you are correct. Well done and it's a good job. Stages of infection in order are incubation stage, prodromal stage, illness stage, and convalescent stage. Preventing and managing diseases is a very serious health issue because it affects the quality of the lives of the people. Remember that when we don't feel well, we cannot do our work properly and also our daily task. Commonly, when we are sick or ill, there is usually an infection happening in our body. The invasion of germs and their growth in the body is called an infection. Infection can begin in the body anywhere and can spread across it. As we go along with our discussion for today, let us watch the video, listen carefully, and take down notes. And we'll answer the following guide question. What is the name of the disease in the video? Is it communicable or non-communicable? Is it emerging or re-emerging disease? Fourth question, based in the story you have watched, how does the disease spread? Are you ready? Let's watch the video. The story of our world reveals the enormous challenges farmers and rural communities have faced. Communities made up of over 2.5 billion people whose livelihoods have always depended on factors largely outside of their control and whose successes and struggles have influenced their area's development and food supply. It's a story that maps out the paths nomadic herders have traveled, moving hundreds of kilometers a year to find pastures for their herds, sometimes clashing with farmers when water and grazing were scarce. It's a tale of a changing climate, bringing floods that have devastated homes and crops and created ideal conditions for relentless swarms of locusts. It's an account of droughts that have gone on and on, destroying farms and growing hunger. With more female food producers in the global south, it's a narrative that has affected women the most. A burden made worse by widespread gender inequality. Farmers and rural communities have been torn apart by disasters and resilience has always been key to their survival. But now there's an unfamiliar blot in our story, something we have never encountered before. COVID-19, a pandemic affecting the entire world. At no other point in history have farmers and rural communities faced so many known and unknown threats, connecting, overlapping, making everything worse. A health crisis overlaps with a climate crisis, putting even more people at risk of hunger than before. As restrictions close borders and markets, small-scale farmers already struggling to make a living cannot sell their produce, nor can they obtain seeds and fertilizer for the next planting season. Lands remain uncultivated, there is less access to food than before, and the threat of famine looms. 
Restrictions prevent pastoralists from moving with their animals. As food, water and opportunities to trade dry up, they risk losing their animals and their livelihoods. Disputes over resources worsen, not just with farmers, but with other groups of pastoralists contained in the same areas. Lockdowns and school closures mean more women and girls are away from fields and school, their livelihoods and futures threatened, while harmful gender norms worsen behind closed doors. Our farmers and rural communities are resilient, but they are facing too many hardships and threats all at once, putting our entire food system at risk. Our story doesn't have to continue like this. With every urgent and ambitious action we take to address the pandemic and its growing impacts, we have an opportunity to introduce a new chapter rooted in sustainability, rebuilding and improving food systems and livelihoods, and breaking the vicious cycles communities have struggled against for too long. We get to write our future. Let us now answer the following guide question. What is the name of the disease in the video? Is it communicable or non-communicable? Is it emerging or re-emerging disease? If you answer COVID-19, communicable disease and re-emerging disease, then you are correct. And our fourth question, based on the story you have watched, how does one person get infected by the disease? Then if you answer, Disease or infection is transferred from one person to another and was kept on transferring in many form of transmission. Great job because you are correct. Infection is an invasion of microorganism into the body that are capable of producing disease. Based on the video we have watched, the disease were transferred from an infected person through different form of transmission and continues to repeat its cycle as if it's like the chain of a bicycle. Continues by ikot ikot until it finds its another host. There are six links in the chain of infection. To identify the six links of the chain of infection, let us play Name It to Win It Game. Are you familiar with Showtime's Name It to Win It Game? our game mechanics everyone is encouraged to join the game everyone is allowed to guess the word or words or phrases based on the visual clues representing the syllables or words the answers may be expressed through our chat box the first person who guessed the word or words or phrases correctly can gain a point the person with most aggregated points will receive today's special point are you ready let's begin with this sample What's the word? Did you get it right? It's attendance. And now you are ready for our activity. Number one. Did you get it right? It's pathogen. The first chain of infection is we call the pathogen. It is an organism with the ability to cause disease. Four major types of pathogens are bacteria, viruses, protozoan, and parasitic worms. All of these can cause diseases. Second link in the chain of infection. If your answer is reservoir, you got it right again. Reservoir is a French term. It is a place within which microorganisms can thrive and reproduce. The most common reservoir is the human body, but it can also be our domestic animals like chicken, pig, and dogs. Our third chain of infection. Is your answer portal of exit? Good job! third link in the chain of infection is the portal of exit. It provides a way for a microorganism to leave the reservoir. Portal of exit can be in the nose, mouth, and body faces. Fourth link in the chain of infection. 
Did you say mode of transmission? You are correct. Mode of transmission, it is the method by which the organism moves from one host to another. Mode of transmission can be direct contact, example is handshake and kissing. Indirect contact means droplet transmission, airborne transmission, foodborne or waterborne transmission, and vector-borne transmission, usually insects and rats. Fifth link in the chain of infection. If your answer is portal of entry, then you are correct. Fifth link in the chain of infection is portal of entry. It is an opening allowing the microorganism to enter the host. Portal of entry can be in different body orifices, mucous membrane, and the breaks in the skin. Pathogens or microorganisms may enter through respiratory system, through inhalation, gastrointestinal system, through ingestion, urinary and reproductive tracts, through sexual contact, and the breaks in the skin. The last and the sixth link in the chain of infection. Did you answer susceptible host? You are correct. The sixth link in the chain of in infection is susceptible host. It is the person who cannot resist a microorganism invading its body. Susceptible host can be the old people, people with comorbidities, the newborn and the babies, and person with weak bodies. So those are the six links in the chain of infection, pathogen, reservoir, portal of exit, mode of transmission, portal of entry, and the susceptible host. Do you have any questions? If none, these are my questions for you. What are the six links in the chain of infection? If you answer pathogen, reservoir, portal of exit, mode of transmission, portal of entry, and susceptible host as the chain of infection, you did a great job. Can you explain how the elements of chain of infection works on each other? The spread of an infection within a community is described as a chain. Elements of chain of infection works on each other by several interconnected steps that describe how a pathogen moves about. The way to stop germs from spreading is by interrupting this chain at any link. What will you do to break the chain of infection? Practicing healthy lifestyle is the key. Very well because it seems that you understood our topic for today. To further test your knowledge, let's go to the chain of infection diagram. The direction for our activity. Copy the diagram in the next slide in your bond paper. Put the different chain of infection in the box based on the short story. Remember that the elements in the chain are sequentially arranged. Here is the chain of infection diagram for you to copy. Watch and listen carefully to our short story and complete the diagram. Germs have wondered a short story. Peter joined the school fun run. He desired to win, so he didn't mind if he was stepping on the water wherein his foot got sucked. Even if this made him uncomfortable because his feet were very itchy, he didn't do the anything but removed his socks that evening. He hung his pair of socks in front of the electric fan to dry and immediately went to sleep because he was so tired. The following morning, his brother John saw the dried pair of socks and used it, thinking that it was clean. Write down the different chain of infections in the box based on the story. 
Remember that the elements of the chain are sequentially arranged. Question number one, what type of pathogen can cause Petri's disease? Number two, where can this microorganism can thrive and reproduce? Number three, where is the reservoir of the microorganism? Question number four, how did microorganisms transfer to John's body? Number five, where did the microorganism enter John's body? Number six, who is the next host? Output Presentation Prevention is better than cure is a very common saying. If you just know how to control it, you can find that the illnesses you are having or encountering can still be avoided. Consequently, if you lack self-discipline, then it would be difficult to achieve disease prevention and control. In your own way of breaking the chain of infection, let's do an activity entitled Breaking the Chain of Infection in My Hands. Today's lesson code HQ3L6 in my hands. Trace your left and right hand in a short band paper. In each finger, recall and write down 10 of your healthy lifestyle that helps you prevent and control disease. And in the palm, write the importance of your role in breaking the chain of infection. This is how you will do our activity for today. While doing the activity, may I present to you our rubric criteria. 3 star for excellent, you can present and discuss properly the activity. 2 star, you are very good, you can present and discuss the activity. And 1 star, you are good, you can present the activity. Present your output now. For your assignment, copy and answer in your notebook. Enumerate the different self-monitoring skills in developing healthy habits in the prevention and control of disease. Number two, explain each stage intelligently. Your reference health 8 quarter 3 module 7 guide for wellness. What an awesome adventure we had today. I hope you learned a lot. Remember that a sound mind is a sound body. See you again for the next adventure in music, art, PE, and health aid.